so in this lecture we are going to discuss about static testing work products so work product is nothing but the artifact itself so whatever we have discussed in the last lecture so all the documents which are generated when we are performing any of the software development lifecycle activity so those document can undergo or shall undergo static testing so now let's see the list of documents which is generated when we are in the software development life cycle so one is specification it could be a business specification or functional requirement or a security requirement any kind of requirement will be called as specifications other documents are user stories acceptance criteria etc then architecture design specification code test where test where is nothing but test plan test case test procedure any of the document which are generated during the testing activity user guide manuals web pages contract with the customer or models such as activity diagram so if you have any flow chart or any uml diagram so all such diagram will also come under the work product list so on, on all these documents we can perform static testing so now let's see an example of specification so we will start with the first point so suppose this is a requirement which is given by the customer so how you will perform a static testing on it that means you have to read this document manually and frame certain questions if you find that there is something which is missing in this requirement so now let's read this requirement that is for web page when the login detail is given the next page shall be loaded in a few millisecond and if login details are not correct then show a pop up so this is a requirement which they are telling so they are dealing with a web page where they want to login and once they login they should go to some other page within some time and then if the login detail is not correct then they want to show the pop up but after reading this requirement you should think is this information enough for the developer to develop the code and when i read this i felt no so there are certain questions which we need to ask to the customer and we have to list them out like how much time so they are telling the next page should come in few milliseconds but they have to define they have to provide a specific time 5 millisecond 1 millisecond 1 second what is the time so that is missing so that is what should be our question here the second point is which page will load next so they are just telling whenever the login detail is correct the next page shall load but what should that next page contain that is that information is not available so that information also we shall ask with the customer and the last point is or the last question is what is the pop up content so they are telling if the login detail is not correct then show a pop up but what type of pop up it will be what will be the text of that particular uh, pop up so these are the questions we have to ask to the customer so that is what will come under the specification or business requirement or functional requirement now moving towards the next point that is user story or acceptance criteria about the user story we will discuss in chapter number 4 but now let's see about the acceptance criteria so suppose this is a acceptance criteria developed by any of the team member when you read this a particular acceptance criteria like login is correct then go to the next page next page shall load in 500 milliseconds so because we have asked question we got the answer that the next page shall be loaded in 500 milliseconds so this is the acceptance criteria next page shall contain the personal information if the login detail is not correct pop up shall appear pop up message is password or user id is incorrect so this is the acceptance criteria when we are reading this particular document we have to make our report again that what is wrong in this particular document so in the first line you can see that login and is there is no space between them so this is one such issue so that is what is reported so how we did it while reading we have to write this down manually if i see the second line then the indentation is wrong because this next shall start from here but there is a gap and then next page is starting so indentation is wrong is in the second line when i go to the third line then the information spelling is wrong so first of all this next spelling is also wrong 
and then the information spelling is wrong so here we have to write another information like next spelling is also wrong and the format is wrong in the fourth line they are telling the format is wrong so all are in the caps whereas if you come to the fourth line this is not in caps so there is a problem with the format so in except once the acceptance criteria is ready we can also perform a static testing on it so this is what this was the example to show that now when we are moving towards the architecture or design specification so this is how the architecture or the design will look like so if there is any path or if there is any transaction which is missing in your architecture or design by reviewing this particular document we can find that out also so that is the reason it is important to review these documents now coming towards the next point that is code or testware let's see an example so we have already seen this example and here in this example we saw that the indentation was not correct and that is what we will report likewise the user guide or the manual or the web pages if you find any issue once they are developed you can report it as part of a static testing and similarly for the last point if there is any problem with the diagrams like flow chart or uml design then that will also come under the static testing so these are the documents which will come under static testing analysis so only thing which you have to remember here is these documents shall not be executed so that is it from this particular topic and i will see you with my next topic until then happy testing